and uh, welcome to the WASET session in June. And I'm going to talk about Matomo, um, which is your data compass. You might actually know it as PWIC, and PWIC Web Analytics has for a very long time already. And um, the PWIC team rebranded at the beginning of the year, and that's why it's now called Matomo. And Matomo means honest, honesty in Japanese. So it's a very fitting name for open source web analytics tool. And as she said, it is um, it allows you to install it on your own server or also use it as a solution by the InnoCraft team who have the founders of Matomo and do the development work. Um, but like everything else, yes, you can run it on your own. And it is also a very secure system because you, like with any other um, open source look at the source code, you can see what is in you can give it a security review and the like. And what I would like to do today is just... Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is why would you actually want to use a web analytics tool? And it is to find out who's actually using your site. Because we don't install software for the software's sake, but we want to help people find out why people are using it and um, also make sure that people are using the software that we have. And in this case of Matomo, we are not wanting to find out how many people are using Matomo, but we are wanting to find out how many people are using our website that we offer to our clients in order to find out a lot of different things. So what can that be? First, where are people from who are visiting our site? Um, the nice thing about Matomo is you can drill down to regions, even in New Zealand, and um, also know about the cities that are people from. Or you can have a high-level overview if you need to give them a bit more privacy. You also find out when there are good times for campaigns. When should you send out an email newsletter? Or when should you tweet? When should you yeah, send something to people so that they are actually reading it? Apparently for this website, it is morning tea in New Zealand. Very good time to send something out around that time so that they see it in their feed because they are standing there with their cup of coffee or tea and um, just browse the internet and not doing anything work-related. Quiet days is probably not a time when you actually want to send something out. So for this website here as an example, avoid Sundays because nobody is checking their email then. And you see very clearly the step in here. And otherwise, if you didn't have a web analytics tool, you might not really know about that. And very important for those of us dealing with um, government clients, is IE9 actually still a thing? Does it need to be supported? Which other browsers do you want need to support? Which devices do your users have? Do you need to worry about mobile a lot? Do you need to worry about Android version 4 still? Or maybe even Android version 2.3? Or is everybody on 5 point or 6 point anyway? And therefore, you can really find out all these important things to make sure that the website that you're running actually supports the operating system and infrastructure that your users have in order to give them the optimal um, experience and can drop off any support that you might still have for old browsers or very obscure browsers because maybe only 0.01% are using them. And you can also find out where people are coming from and where they are going off to once they've been on your site. So this is an example from mahara.org from our demo site. And there I just went to their homepage. And I see that people are coming from, of course, internal sites, um, from search engines, but also from specific websites. And so I've got one from sysadmins in Thailand. And then also from a computer science course in Thailand. So I know that they are accessing our demo site. So from the sysadmins, now I'm wondering, why would they be accessing a portfolio site? Unfortunately, this page or the site itself doesn't exist anymore, so I can't find that out. But for the ones in the computer science course, I could then contact the um, teacher or the university in order to find out more, well, why are you going to our demo site? Do you have it in your program? Do you maybe want some of your students to program on Mahara, get some work experience there? So there's a heck of a lot of stuff that you can just find out from that. And I also find out where are people heading off to once they've been on that particular page. 
So some go to our wiki, some look at a YouTube video, and then others go also off to the user manual. And we also know, are people coming back to the site that we have? Which is very important because ideally you retain your users and they are coming back on a regular basis. So Matomo gives you nice graphs and you can have those graphs um, for one day, for a couple of days, for an entire week, for a month, for a year, or for however long you collect the data. Because the important thing with data analysis is that you collect the data. Because um, if you want to start reporting over the data tomorrow, but he only started today, then there's not lots to report about. And therefore, I find it is important to, if you want to do data analysis, turn on the web analytics as soon as possible so that you have something to report over once you're ready to report on things. Of course, in Europe, that's now a little bit trickier with the GDPR because there you do need to be careful for how long you keep the data, but Matomo supports GDPR regulations as well very well. Last but not least, there are alerts and scheduled reports because nobody likes going to a web page all the time getting reports from there. In Matomo, you can have them sent to you via email and even if you like via SMS. The nice thing is, you don't have to send them to yourself, you can send them to your colleagues who need to report over things, and therefore they don't come and see you to get those reports, they just get them themselves. And you can schedule them so that they run on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, and you can really have many different reports, get them as a PDF, or get them as data that you can process further. So that was kind of the general web analytics functionality that we knew. And so you might think, well, it hmm, doesn't really sound so different from what you might have on your own website, but there's way more in Matomo. There's some really nice things that go beyond what you would think web analytics can do. So one of them is the visitor profile, which again can be very invasive because it does tell you a lot about that person, also across devices and across sessions. But if you are in an organization that actually is allowed to keep that data, it would be very useful. So you could also associate that with an API and therefore have the username in there, and as you can see, at some point even a profile picture, and you get all the information about them. Matomo now also has form analytics. So you don't see what people have put into their forms, but what you can see is when they drop off or how long they take on forms, which is important when you deal a lot with forms and when your project is around people filling in forms. And therefore that's a plugin that you might want to investigate. Heat maps is one thing that UX designers and business analysts are very keen on because they tell you where people are clicking on, what they are clicking on, how many and so on. And so that's very nice, directly built into Matomo, it's very lightweight and you can turn it on for an entire time for the site but only sample your users. So that say only every tenth person is actually recorded for the heat maps and not everybody who visits, so that you also get randomized data. Similarly, session recording is again one of those usability tools that usually require an entirely different software and setup. You can do that now in Matomo directly from there and then run through the session, go from one page to the next and see where people go with their mouse, where they click on and um, where they head off to. David. No, you, you do that for the entire site. Yes, so you can tell a specific user login now and then you track them, but um, the plugin allows you to just set up the heat maps or session recording and then say, I want to record everybody who comes to my site and then every visit will be recorded unless the do not track feature is turned on in the browser or you can say, I want to record every 20th person or every 50th person if you are on a very busy site. You can also do A-B testing. Personally, I haven't really tried that yet because it requires that I actually have an A-B website. Um, but that is a possibility that you keep your own website and do the testing in there and get the results via Matomo. David? Yeah. Uh, 
you're tagging the website. So you always put, um, it always goes according to a website that you have. So if you have a URL, you can also have multiple URLs in it and also do roll-up reporting so that you can track individual websites and then they roll up all into one report. And you can also segment your website. So if you say, I want to exclude all Catalyst visits because we are doing development work on the site, then you can exclude those. Or you can exclude IPs or if anything that you can track, you can also exclude or you can include and can have and and or relations in there. Um, Matomo is also very rich on APIs, so you can integrate it. There's a integration directly with Moodle through a plugin so that people don't even need to be set up with a username in Matomo, but everything just comes through Moodle. And um, you can get data out of it via the APIs and um, work with the user profile, so lots and lots of possibilities there. There are many more plugins than I have time to show you today or talk about, so definitely check out the website. And um, Matomo has been around for a very long time and it is a um, very important web analytics tool that is being used around the world. And um, actually the main developers are right here in New Zealand, in Rotorua, and also in, in the Hutt Valley. But is Matomo enough? Um, I'm really happy that I found this picture because I find it illustrates it very nicely what, what I think about how um, data is, or where data is, and how we are looking at data. Because we have these two beach chairs, which kind of off angle, so they are not looking in the same direction. So this is my Matomo, and this is statistics or any other data that I can get out of another site, um, or maybe even the site that I'm using. So on Mahara, we do have statistics, so I get this view of the data ocean, and then you have the web analytics, and you get this view. So you have slightly different views of the exact same data set, and combining those two, you get a better picture of the overall usage of your data or of your site of what people are actually doing on it. So I wouldn't just say that Matomo can do everything because it is one view of the data. And then in combination, if your site already gives you statistics or additional reporting, then that would be good to take into consideration as well and combine in the data warehouse and then make use of. And so, your journey really just starts with a simple tracking code. If you're on a Catalyst hosted site, you, it's very easy. You can have access to our instance. Or if you want to set up your own, the um, source code is available online and the Matomo team brings out uh, regular releases. It's on a continuous release cycle and security releases are also brought out on a regular basis, and but usually directly with new feature releases. And um, there is also a hosted solution then in Europe available for those that might need to be there and have their data there. Thank you. Uh, that can be identified if your site supports that. There is um, site search keywords available, and um, that should also already be a built-in uh, built functionality. Yeah. So a Drup Drupal site can be done.
Thanks for the question, Kwan. Um, at, at the moment, as far as I know, it only detects single page forms and not multi multi page forms. But I think that is one of the features the the team would like to work on as well. What can go wrong? Um, so what you would do is um, create segments. And so in the segments, you have visitors. And these there you can have the visitor IP of the browser. And then you, you might not see it very well, but it's kind of looking for the browser. So it's going through my data and trying to come up with the options. Right now it doesn't find anything. But in this case, you would just pop in your browser, I would assume. And then it will be excluded. So I've done this with IP addresses. And so it showed me the IP addresses, say, for our office here. And then we excluded those and also from another client in order to prevent those things to show up. You mean the browser versions? You can also do browser versions. Yeah. Um, so pretty much anything that you can report on, you can segment into or segment out. And so if you take a look at the list here, you have the visitors. So that's probably where, you m where most of your segmentation would happen. So you can also take out brands or device types. 